Thank you so much. Oh, there is big news, big news this week. First of all, the Sunny Jim Peanut Butter Factory next to I-5 burned down the day before yesterday. Mm, I know, I know, I know, I'm sad too. Apparently the first person to report the fire was a peanut butter taste tester, and he called 911 and said, Of course. Down at 911 headquarters, they had problems of their own this week. You probably saw that they heard this, that the 911 operators were passing out at the switchboard because some fumes or something leaked into the building, which raises an interesting question. When 911 has an emergency, who do they call? I, it's just, I don't know. But <laughs> they got the Sunny Jim message out. They, you know, they called it in time before they passed out. Uh, it was tough firefighting conditions, actually. First oily, then alternately smooth and crunchy. <laughs> Fortunately, the building was vacant, but they did notice that there was still some peanut butter stuck to the roof of the building. So. Uh, the only real problem was when the fire reached the old jelly holding tanks. And I believe we have some news footage of that. There, the firemen are, I see, valiantly uh, trying to put the fire there. Look at that, some jelly. <laughs> Look, so I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, there's people, you know, oh, there it comes out of the building. Yeah. It's a tragic waste of our strategic jelly reserves there. It looked like uh, strawberry, I guess it was. I don't know. I'm kind of bummed out about the whole thing, really, because I, I always liked Sonny Jim Peanut Butter growing up because it, ha it had his picture on the front, and he looked like one of the few kids that I could actually beat up, you know? <laughs> it gave me some sort of comfort there. I'm not... Not sure what you're applauding there, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Beat him up. But that picture is now gone. They decided to give Sonny Jim a hipper, more contemporary image. And I just, you know, I think that's wrong. I'm against it. I miss the old one. Some of the letters on the familiar old uh, Sonny Jim sign, that landmark sign, got burned up. Now it just says, Onion. <laughs> so they're thinking about turning it into a Thai restaurant. <laughs> Same thing. Anyway... Speaking of disasters, Beauty and the Beast opened this week, and uh, the opening night crowd looked fabulous in their fancy gowns and tuxedos and hard hats and bulletproof vests. You know, the striking musicians uh, are getting very militant. You know, you can only play a French horn for so long before you snap. It's one of the things, I had to carry this dorky thing around all through junior high, now someone's got to pay me! You've got to pay! <laughs> Of course, once they made it through the strikers out front, everybody calmed down, and then they, the audience discovered that the replacement musicians only knew how to play with combs and wax paper, just, just like that. Except for one guy, uh, and he played the bagpipe. Put an interesting, you know, different spin on the show. Uh, and the other big uh, news, there was another giant reshuffle in local television stations. You know, the, the guys down at Channel 11, they left the building in news vans yesterday morning, hit the streets as CBS affiliate news people. By the time they arrived back at the station, they found out they were going to be a UPN affiliate. <laughs> and they said, you, what, you, what is that? And they said, you know, UPN, that's the network that has homeboys in outer space. <laughs> Well, you could tell that was a real morale booster when Monica Gale started the news. In tonight's news, ah, uh, who gives a rat's ass? Uh, who gives a <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, over at Cairo, Channel 7, there was a knock at the door. They opened it, and it was CBS. And Cairo said, well, look who's come crawling back. <laughs> Mr. Big Shot Network. Gone with that floozy station in Tacoma for two years, and now we're just supposed to take you back just like that, huh? Okay, come on in. <laughs> come on, everything's just where you left it. Come on in. Cairo is now owned by the Cox Corporation, and this Monday you'll see their new advertising slogan, We're Cairo and we're Cox. <laughs> <laughs> look for that. We thought out of the box was a bad idea. Anyway... <laughs> Meanwhile, at Channel 22, people kept calling in saying, when I turn to your station, all I see is a big picture of Lou Pinella's ass. What, what is going on? An alert engineer soon found the problem there. You see, you know, Lou sitting in the satellite dish again. He's got to learn to get out of the dish, Lou. There you go. And in movie news, the Star Wars mania continues with the re-release of The Empire Strikes Back and the merchandise... Oh, yeah. Got some big fans here. 
Everyone's going crazy about it. The merchandising is going crazy. Taco Bell is one of the sponsors this year. I was driving by a Taco Bell yesterday, and I saw they had a, uh, a Star Wars slogan up on the reader board. It just seems strange choice for a place that sells bean burritos. You know, I mean, just... <laughs> what do you think? It just doesn't seem like the message they want to get across. <laughs> Oh, well. Anyway, we welcome all the new TV owners to this market, especially our new owner. And uh, to show you that Almost Live is a high-profile and profitable show, we'd like to welcome a new sponsor. <laughs>